So Jesus has established a kingdom. Uh, he's paid the price for all of our sin. He's able to rule and reign forever. And you might ask the question, well, if he's established a kingdom, why is the world still the way that it is? Well, the answer to that question is quite simple, really. You can understand it in this way. It's that he set a time when that kingdom will kick into play in every single way possible. But that time's not yet. At the moment, what he's doing is he's recruiting people out of this world into his kingdom. So it's like he calls us to make known to people what he has done so that we can say, okay, I want to be a part of your kingdom. And if we choose to be a part of his kingdom, if we, if we respond in that way and we say, yeah, that's what I want, then what he does is he begins to rule and reign in our lives while we live in this messed up world. But our loyalty would be with him so that when he returns to establish his kingdom, we have our place in that kingdom. But that brings me to our final problem when it comes to understanding what Easter what the Easter message means. And that is this. The real issue, the real problem that we all face is this. Yeah, Jesus has taken, paid the price for all of our sins so it can all be taken away. He's come back from the grave so that he can establish his kingdom forever. He's inviting people now to join and come into his kingdom and to come under his rule. The way is open. All we got to do is, is come back to him. But the problem is, we don't. Most of us would prefer, think about this, think about this for yourself. We would prefer to be our own boss and our own kind of king in our own little world with all this misery, with this corruption, this messed up world full of all its evil. We would prefer to keep both of our feet firmly in that than to say, Jesus, I need you to rule over my life. And I want to be a part of your kingdom. We prefer all the rubbish to what Jesus offers. And that tells us something profoundly messed up about our own hearts. It tells us that our hearts are corrupt. That given the choice, we choose a corrupt, messed up world over the wonderful world that Jesus is establishing for us, that he has paid the price for for us. He's done everything for us to enter into it, yet we say, oh yeah, but I, I prefer this world. That's what most people do. They don't want to give up all the rubbish because they're corrupt. We're all corrupt and there's something about us that actually likes the rubbish. And that tells us our hearts are corrupt. Now the thing about Jesus is this. He will not force anyone into his kingdom. He says, it's up to you. You can turn to me or you can turn away. But if we turn away, then he will establish his kingdom. And we, because we have not been recruited into it, will be shut out from it forever and ever and ever. The Bible is absolutely clear on this. When we die, that, it's not just the end of all things. No, we will exist for eternity, either in Jesus' kingdom or shut out forever. And so we've got this massive problem, really. It's a problem of our corrupt hearts. And if you recognise that problem in yourself, this is what Jesus does. If you recognise that and you come to him and you say, Jesus, I, I can see that it's true... You've done all this for me and you've got this kingdom set up for me. But the truth is, I, I, I do, I, I prefer this world and it scares me. And, and I just don't feel like I can, I can come to you. I don't feel like I can live in your kingdom. because I, I, just, I just want this rubbish. I, don't, I know it's wrong, but I can't help it. If you admit that to him and ask him, do you know what he'll do? He will give you a new heart. If you say, Jesus, my heart is corrupt. I need a new heart. Will you give me a new heart, a new life? He promises that from this new kingdom that he's establishing, he'll take something of that newness and create it in you. So you'll have a new heart that no longer loves the rubbish. That's no longer addicted to the rubbish of this world. But actually 
now longs for his kingdom that's coming and appreciates him and knows him and loves him. But we have to ask, we have to say, Jesus, will you forgive me? Thank you that you've taken away all my sin, that you've paid the price for that you died for it. Thank you that you're setting up a kingdom and you, you invite me in. Forgive me for ever turning my back. And would you give me a new heart that I might live for you? You pray that prayer genuinely and he will answer.